and that you may love the Lord your God. Listen to his voice. Easter is our opportunity to interrupt the story that has been written by making a deliberate decision and step into an alternate ending. You are not called to die. You are called to live. You are not called to live in sin. You are called to walk in righteousness. You are meant to walk in righteousness. You are meant to step on this new path. The world you have to is one of God. Depending on the future someday, my outline is quite simple. My outline pretty much goes this way. I want to show you two states of Jesus. I want to show you two implications of the resurrection. And I want to land at two case studies that we will come to a close at John 20, chapter 21, our close of this text. Life and death is set before us. Two states of Jesus, two implications of the resurrection, and two case studies. Let's get to work. There is a theological doctrine, and it's a theological doctrine of humanity of Jesus, and it's known as the two these two states, if we could use the movie metaphor for a moment, it's much like two acts of Jesus' humanity. Now, if you do the church and you're wondering what we believe as a congregation, we believe that Jesus is all God, but simultaneously he was all man. And so this doctrine around the state of Jesus categorizes Jesus' humanity into two different states. The two states are first humiliation. And then exaltation. Let me prove this to you from Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider the quality of God something to be grasped, but instead made himself nothing. This is humiliating. Taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, Humbled himself, he humiliated himself, and became obedient even unto death. Death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place. He gave him the name that is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth, and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. If you're new to Boo, I know you keep hearing the name Boo around town. That's just our slang name. That's just our nickname. The only name that hangs above this church is the one true name of Jesus Christ. We are a Jesus people. And Jesus is Jesus is Jesus is Jesus. And Jesus is the one who created an alternate ending for me. Humiliation and as you look at these two acts, these two states of Jesus, each one of these states, or each one of these acts, would be marked by four different themes of Jesus' life. Let's start with humiliation. It first begins with the incarnation. This is the very fact that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, stepped out of divinity, wrapped himself up in flesh and blood. The Creator became the creation. This in and of itself is humiliating. That Jesus Christ was born of a woman in a bond, in a stable. But in that incarnation, he grows up into a man, and it leads to his second scene, which is the scene of suffering. That Jesus Christ took on our flesh, took on our humanity, and with it was confined to our humanity. Meaning, Jesus got tired. He needed a nap. He got hungry. He needed to be fed. He would get thirsty. He needed something to drink. Jesus was tempted in all the same way that you and I are tempted. That's what we're talking about next few weeks. We've got food from the next week. That he understands us more than we know. But it's not that he just suffered without limitations. He literally suffered. We remember on Good Friday, as we just celebrated, that he was falsely accused, betrayed by a dear friend. Some of you this past year, you've walked through deep betrayal, deep offense, deep hurt, deep trauma. Let me tell you, Jesus understands you. Jesus knows that too, but he suffered in every way that you have suffered. That 
they brought him before a trial where he was falsely accused and ultimately they stripped his clothes and they left him naked. And the town of 